This is International Master Eric Kislik, and today I'll be answering the question, what is the most ridiculous opening in chess? To answer that question, I think we need to be fair about it and only really consider things that were played by quite good players. I'm not going to talk about something like, you know, just playing F3, King, King F2, King G3, and something like that that was just played in a blitz game or a bullet game. That's not really relevant here. But I have a pretty compelling case to make about something that was dubbed the Rook's Indian Defense by the great Carlini, who's a very famous blitz player in Santa Monica, California. So he's about 2,000 strength, and he's had this played in many of his games. And I noticed that there was a very similar idea to this Rook's Indian defense on the other side of the board, which is, I would say it's quite comical, but the thing that makes it even more comical is it's actually been played in IM and GM games. So I'll show you the basic idea, G4, H5. And I made a video previously on the Grob showing the best way to face it, but uh, the line given here is definitely funnier. So um, probably the best move is to play g5, just not trading the g-pawn for the h-pawn. After all, when you take the h-pawn, you open up black's h8 rook, which is completely ineffective at the moment, and it also trades the g-pawn for the h-pawn, which is black's least valuable pawn and leaves white with an isolated pawn. So there is a case to be made about this, although after e5, black is still better. So it is kind of a clumsy position to play with white without a doubt. So this move, G takes H5, was played in the game Markovich Ristovich in 1995. I believe Markovich is an IM, I think Ristovich is a Fide Master. In any case, um, probably the best move is just to go E5 and after C4 to play Knight F6 and then try to just recapture on H5 on the next move. But he played Rook takes H5, and the idea for calling it the Rook's Indian Defense is that, like in many Indian defenses, black goes G6. But here, it's kind of like his rook is quote-unquote fianchettoed rather than the bishop. So after e4, black plays the move g6 to defend the rook on h5. Now, one of black's ideas is to play the move d5 to get counterplay. So for instance, if d4, after d5, black is slightly better. So white should play knight c3 to stop d5. And after knight f6, white plays bishop e2. And now, finally, he plays d4, d5 e5, but black can play the active knight e4, not playing passively with his knight, takes, takes, bishop e3, bishop f5. Black is pretty solid here. He can consider just playing knight d7 and c5 and striking back against the center. For example, c3, knight d7, if white goes h4, intending to play h5 sooner or later. Um, c5, h5, takes, takes, e6. We have a rather comical, sort of ridiculous position on the board, but one which is objectively balanced. So I thought this was a ridiculous, but somewhat understandable variation. You can understand how somebody might actually play that, even in a classical game, not just a blitz game or a bullet game. And there's a very similar idea on the other side of the board, which I actually saw rather recently in a game between a 2600 player and a 2500 player, both quite strong grandmasters. And on the other side of the board, it was b4, a5. And the move b takes a, a5 was actually played by Stebich, who's 2612. And Zelchich is like 2520 or so. And after the move e5, black is slightly better, and he'll play the move knight c6 and regain the pawn on a5. I just thought that this was rather comical. It's almost like a queen's rook Indian defense. It's just so bizarre and strange but that you could actually imagine being played in a game. It's not something where you lose two pawns straight away. You just made a, make a strategic concession very early in the game. So the best move after b4, a5 is again to play b5, just like after g4, h5. Probably the best is to play g5. And in this case, black's a8 rook is kept out of play, and the exchange of the b4 pawn for the a5 pawn is not made. So after e5, white plays bishop to b2, attacking the e5 pawn, d6. White goes c4, and black can play knight f6. And here we have a rather balanced game. It's a rather funny outcome to such a bizarre opening, but I consider this to be the most ridiculous opening that you can expect to see in chess played by elite grandmasters. This has been Eric Kislik. Consider subscribing. Thanks.